piece by Dallas, make it hurt. Hello and welcome. It's the Deep Cover Podcast. Thank you. Thank you, as always, for tuning in, whether you're listening in audio format or you're watching the video. Appreciate everybody. Joined by my guys, Kerry Stevenson, Chris Aguilera. Fresh, fresh off an exciting uh, Sunday night football game. Ravens take down the Kansas City Chiefs 36-35 in an instant classic, you know, just from a football game perspective let alone if you're ravens fans like we are of course it was awesome for us but just like as a football fan just you know an instant classic kind of game just back and forth scoring all up and down the field big plays on defense at the end or well throughout really on both sides of the ball uh but at the end for the ravens so just a lot to talk about a lot to kind of look back on um before we get into all of that let me just touch base with each of the guys i'll start with you carrie how you doing man Good man, uh, you know, relieved that we're back together in a happy, you know, momentous occasion. You know, we've been doing a lot of trying to persevere through injuries and different things like that. So, you know, it, it's good to, uh, you know, be on the winning side of things. Absolutely. I mean, what what a difference a weekend made, right? From the Monday night game and week one and the craziness with how that ended to uh, this game and the exciting way that it ended. Uh, Chris, I know you had the candle. You saw it on Twitter. Obviously, it came through. How you doing? Still got it with me. I'm not turning this thing out for the rest of the year. <laughs> but, uh, no, I got a little extra pep in my step, you know, after after that big win because, you know, like you said, Mike, we were, we were kind of somber last week, and uh, we weren't really looking forward to this Kansas City game. Not that we were giving up. But we were preparing for the worst. But I, I'm glad, you know, we can come in and have some smiles on our face and uh, be victorious. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's just, you know, it was one of those just classic NFL kind of situations where going into it, it looks like the deck is stacked against one side. You know, you get two very good teams. They've been going at it um, with each other over the last couple of years. The games have, have been you know, generally they've, they've all been good games. I guess the one last year got away from the Ravens a little bit, even though they kind of tried to to get it close there towards the end. But generally they've, they've really come down to the wire and been good games. And going into this one, like you guys both said, with the injuries, um, you know, to the Ravens, I, I forget how many guys are on IR now, 15 or, or 14 or something like that. Um, it just kind of looked like the, deck, like the deck was sort of stacked against them. But – true NFL fashion, these are the kinds of games you get in those situations where it looks like, hey, it might not be as close a game as it's been in the past between these two teams for whatever that reason is. Then it turns out to be just a great game. And the team who maybe you thought didn't have as good a chance as they would normally have is the one who comes out with the victory. So NFL is crazy, man, how it does that throughout the season, which is different games where everybody's kind of on one side of something or most people are on one side of something. And then it's the other thing um, that happens. So, hey, and this time we were, as fa- as Ravens fans, we were on um, the good end of it. So, you know, we're, we'll, we'll take that for sure. Um, but let's, let's talk about it. Let's get into the game a little bit. I was thinking what we could do, and then, of course, you know, you guys can, can jump in with whatever you want to do as well is that we could just look at both sides of the ball and maybe, you know, take uh, just kind of do a round, maybe two rounds if, if we have that many players we want to talk about, but maybe mention a player or two or a play or two or a situation, you know, whatever you want, but just something from each side of the ball that uh, really kind of stood out to you or was something, you know, you really remember from the game. So uh, I'll start with you, Chris. Well, let's, let's go offense, uh, first um anything on that side of the ball whether it was a play or a player or a situation um that that kind of you know that, that you still remember well you know where i'm gonna go i'm gonna go makari at right tackle hive because i've been you know talking about it since the summertime i, I felt like this guy was a i felt like he was a tackle and you know in the preseason we saw him just get bulldozed by by guys when he was playing guard and 
it was not pretty. And and you could tell it's like that that's not his natural spot. He he doesn't have the strength to, to hold up there. But on the outside of right tackle, he I mean, he pretty much solidified that 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 uh right side for the for the team with him, him and Zeitler over there. So I thought he played well. And uh, you know, hopefully this is a sign of, of things to come and and uh, let's let's pray we don't have more of those Monday night performances that we saw from from Villanueva on on that right side because we see when when Lamar can trust his line, we see what he can do. And on on Sunday night, he he had full trust of that line. And the once he has that, he has the confidence to take his game to a higher level. Yeah, that that you know brings you back to 2019, right? When he had yep. continuity on the offensive line. And, you know, guys really kind of locked in and, and, and playing well. Uh, we saw what kind of show he and this offense can put on. And, you know, last night, again, we, we talked about how it was such a difference from the Monday night game to, you know, in week one to the Sunday night, past Sunday night's game. That was another big area of difference, right? Remember all of the pressure and whether you are into PFF or sports information solutions, whatever kind of charting, grading service you're in, any of that stuff. Uh, the pressure numbers were like flipped, right? Ravens offense was under pressure, I think like 50% of the time in that, that week one game. And then I, I don't know if they had more than maybe two or three pressures that they allowed on offense in this game. Um, and I'm not saying they were they were on the O-line. I think I even saw somewhere that they were on running back. So I'm going to stay away from that because, you know, I know that's a whole nother rabbit hole talking about who's responsible, who's not responsible. But anybody watching the game could see that it was just, you know, a totally different uh, environment on offense in terms of the offensive line and the time that Lamar had uh, when he was dropping back. So uh, kudos to them, man. I mean, yeah, as, great as, sure. he was, as great as some of the other guys on offense were, we'll probably touch on some of them. You know, none of it happens without those guys up front uh, playing the way that they did. Yeah. And they were amazing. Even big country, even Ben Cleveland got in there for some snaps. Yeah, <laughs> looking like taxi driver. You saw him with the mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> he was locked in. He was locked in for it. Uh, so even he got in and got some run. Uh, Gary, let me go to you. Uh, still staying on the offense, offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, what was it for you? Play a player, a situation? You know, what, what do you remember? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad Chris hit on Makari because I was definitely going to hit on Makari and give him props. Uh, if people remember when we did the 53-man um, um, prediction, um, we were kind of going back and forth with that offensive line, the backup offensive line, and Chris viewed Makari as a tackle, and they kind of changed his um, outlook on uh, the, the backup position. And he, he talked about it then, how the guy moved like a tackle, looked like a tackle, and you, you saw it come to fruition in this game. I mean, for him to hold up and pass protection against those cats, the, the guys that he had to go up against, to hold up and pass protection against those guys, and then to move the way he moved in the running game, just being able to fit, being able to, you know, get outside of, uh, the tackle box and do some things and, you know, and, and, and move bodies in the run game, you know, with quickness, with movement. I thought that was huge. Um, so, you know, again, shout out to, to Chris B in that, that, uh, that fortune teller seeing that before anybody else would see it. Cause I mean, who would think a guy that's a backup, um, center undersized backup center would would be able to come in and like stabilize a, a right tackle position and and to me man he he's got to be the right tackle the rest of the season i mean you don't play that well against that level of competition and you know you don't put that back on the bench i'm i'm sorry you can't yeah man i i don't like it's not like he was going up against a bum he was going up against chris jones a lot of the night right. you know who is one of the highest paid defensive players in the league and deservedly so. And he was holding his own against Chris, the Chris Jones. So yeah. it, it, it's one thing if he's doing it against, you know, Joe Schmo, but from the, that got called up from the practice squad, but to do it up against a high level player like that, that was, that was pretty impressive. You on mute, Mike. 
There we go. My bad. I was going to say, uh, Carrie hit on a juicy topic, and we don't have to get into it tonight because uh, it's for another time. Uh, it's not a problem they have to they have to deal with right now. But if you keep Makari at right tackle, and when Ronnie Stanley comes back and is healthy uh, physically and mentally and ready to go, what do you do with Alejandro Villanueva at that point? Like I said, that's a topic for another time. Uh, not a problem they got to deal with right now. But, uh, you know, that that is going to be a decision that's going to have to be made when they, they cross that bridge. Um, for me, uh, and we can see if we want to do another round, I'll throw my guy out. If you guys want to touch on anybody else, we can do another round. Uh, for me, it's got to be Lamar. I mean, that that obviously, you know, goes without saying. Um, I, I was – it was between Lamar and Hollywood. I wanted to talk about both of them, um, but I'll, I'll I'll go with Lamar just because I think what we saw is that aggressive attacking, you know, foot on the gas pedal, no break the entire time, Lamar Jackson, because it didn't matter what was happening, right? Mistakes, throw a pick six, your receiver slows, your receiver slips down and is not where you expect him to be when you let the ball go and that turns into a pick six. All right, cool. Get the ball back. Let's go down the field and score. Um, you know, throw another interception later in the game, probably a little bit of a force, um, you know, force throw on his part. But again, they were down in the red zone. He's trying to make a play. Hey, cool. Nope. We'll get the ball back. We'll go score again. Uh, it just didn't matter. You know, it didn't matter. When he and the offense had the ball, they were going up and down the field, you know, and, Everything was on display. Everything that I think makes him who he is and, and one of the most exciting and most dynamic quarterbacks in the league was on display last night. Whether it was running the ball, whether it was throwing the ball, um, you know, the leadership, you know, hey, you, you want to go for it, Lamar? Hell yeah, let's go, coach. I mean, everything was on display. So, uh, you know, I think you guys hit it early when. He has the support. And that's the thing that I think we always have to remember about this is it's a team game. I mean, it goes without saying, but sometimes people forget about it. And it's easy to get focused on individual players because of how, how, how good they are. But it's a team game. And so when he has the offensive line, when he has, um, you know, targets to throw the ball to, when he has, and I know people will say, you know, they're down to their third string running back and they're signing guys off the street. So the running backs don't matter. Again, not getting into that. That's what another <laughs> <laughs> Where he has talent around him, uh, you know, he, he's just going to take that talent and, and maximize it. Right? He's going to get the most out of everybody around him. He's going to lift everybody around him uh, in addition to his own individual play, which is spectacular. So, I mean, he just, he, he just was, was everything that you, wanted him to be uh in that game so and i was happy obviously everybody was happy for him to to get that win because you know look you're gonna lose and you're gonna lose games and, and sometimes there's gonna be a certain team who it's almost like they got your number i mean he said it himself it kind of been their kryptonite just because they've been losing to him but that happens you know you can look at, at great players in any sport and you know for jordan back in the day it was the pistons right the old school bad boys Everybody kind of has that until they don't, right? Until you win that game and you break through. Yeah. So I think we all knew that it was going to happen for him. We probably didn't necessarily think this was the game where it was going to happen. <laughs> but uh, what, what better scenario? What better scenario for it to happen in when it looked like it was unlikely uh, and, and then for them to do it? So, um, Kerry, I'll go back to you. Do you got anybody else on the offensive side of the ball you want to talk about? We can we can do another round on offense, or we can go to defense. Yeah, for me on offense, it's just the offense as a whole, and I see like a major eruption coming for this offense at some point this season, and that's kind of crazy to think, you know, considering they've scored sixty three points already this season, but when you think about it. You got Rashad Bateman coming back at some point. And I'm I'm looking at those bunch formations that they're having success out of, you know, throwing the football, adding him to that mix. At some point, Ronnie Stanley is going to be back at left tackle and he'll be healthier than he was, you know, week one. Nick Bull at some point, they're going to get him back. He's going to be on that line of scrimmage, sealing things off in the running game, helping in the pass protection. And all of a sudden, these runs that have been like close to getting broken off, 
might get broken off if you have a guy like Boyle in there, you know, moving some people around. So I look at all these things. I look at an offense that's continuing to kind of, you know, build cohesion together, and, and I like the direction that they're going. I, I think they have a real chance by the end of the season to be looked at in the same likeness as the Chiefs and the Bucks and these teams. I mean, really, they're already in that stratosphere, but t- but people don't really look at it the same because you, you have a quarterback leading this team that's the centerpiece of the run game. And so – because he's not out there throwing for 400 yards and four touchdowns, but he's still accounting for four touchdowns. You know, people don't view it the same. But I think with some of the things they're doing, with some of the weapons they have, once they kind of get everything ramped up and they get everybody back, I think by the end of the year, you could look at this team and, and you know, you view them in the same light as you view a Chiefs or Bucks or, you know, one of those offenses. Yeah, the thing that we know he's done consistently since he's really become a full-time starter at quarterback is lead this offense to points. They score points, and you can talk about how it looks, whether it's on the ground as opposed to in the air, in, in the air and people can talk about being last in passing yards. You can talk about all of that, and you can have all of that, but at the end of the day, you look at points scored and you look at wins, and that's what he and this team has done on offense. They score points and they win games. Uh, in the regular season, I mean, I forget what his record is now, but I know coming into this year it was like 37 or something like that. So uh, we've talked about it a bunch just amongst, you know, our small little group. But, you know, their thing is all about scoring and all about efficiency, right? It, it doesn't have to be about putting up 300-yard passing games or 400-yard passing games or whatever. And that's not to say that he doesn't have that in him. I think that, you know, if, if their offense – you know, maybe had a little bit of a different philosophy, you could probably see that. And you might even see it within this offense. You know, it just depends on individual game. But to me, it doesn't matter, right? I just want to see them score points and win games. I don't really care how you do it, um, you know, because at the end of the day, there are no pictures in the standings. They don't draw pictures on it, right? It's just numbers. And it's wins and it's losses. Uh, I'll come back to you, Chris. Anybody else on offense you want to talk about? I, just, I want to piggyback real quick on both of you for Lamar and just what Kerry said about the total offense because we've seen this team where they struggle, specifically Lamar, struggle early on in these big, you know, pressure games and these pressure moments, and they kind of just unravel. And it doesn't really start clicking until the second half for them. But we didn't see Lamar or that bench get down. You know, we saw the pick six. And then there was another, there was another situation where he he throws the the interception in the red zone, and usually we'll see them kind of get down on themselves. Oh, I think we lost Chris. Oh, we lost Chris. <laughs> I think he he's probably going to jump back in real soon. But for the time being, yes, we have lost him here. Let's do this. Oh, we'll switch to the two man until <laughs> we get him back. I'm sure he'll be back briefly. Um, you know, he was just continuing that theme that you were talking about uh, with the total offense and, um, you know, how sometimes in some of these other big games, you know, you can, you can particularly think about the playoff games where it seems like they've had some adversity and they just haven't been able to overcome it. You know, like it happens and it's almost like they, they can't, put it behind them and, and, and kind of get back going again. It, it almost kind of snowballs on them until later in the game, right? Late, later, kind of third quarter, fourth quarter, some of these games. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way against the Bills because Lamar got hurt. But, you know, even uh, 2019 against uh, the Titans, you know, start moving the ball a little bit, but just not able to get it in the end zone. What we saw last night was the opposite, you know, um, had yeah. that adversity very early on, but, we're still able to move the ball. We're still able to score points. And it was like, no matter what, what happened um, from an adverse, from, you know, an adversity standpoint, they didn't get into a hole uh, where they couldn't get themselves out. Yeah. And I'm just really happy for these group of guys, man, because when you look at it, they've done so many things right 
from the team, from the front office, from the coaching staff. They've done a lot of things right. They've won a lot of games. And if they would have lost this one game, all of that would have went out of the window and it would have just been about, hey, they can't win the big one. They can't get over the hump. They can't do this. They can't do that. So you that's got to wear on you. So, you know, for them to be able to pull a win like this out, especially with all the adversity, they've, they've faced the adversity of two or three teams in the last month, <laughs> you know, 15 guys on IR, you know, the coach is taking the hard. He's like – man, I was just trying to get these guys some reps together, you know, that that kind of stuff. And, I mean, we, we're not even in October. So for them to go through that, I was just glad to to see them just have something good happen. You know what I mean? Just just have something go their way or early on. Yeah, because, you know, you said it. You put in all of that work. You you build this team. You try to, to do things the right way. Um you know, let, let these guys be themselves, you know, from a coaching standpoint and um, you just, you know, have, have, have kind of struggled in, in some of these prime time, you know, sort of big time games. But uh, like you, I'm happy. I'm happy that it was able to kind of all yeah. click for them last night uh, because it, 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 it does relieve some of that pressure. And, and look, it's, it's a regular season game. It's a week two game. We got 15 more games to go. It wasn't a playoff game. I, I get all of that. Uh, but it still was an important game, in my yeah. opinion, uh, even as early as it is in the season. Number one, it's against, um, you know, a conference um, opponent and and one who you know is going to be there at the end of the season. So it's important from that point, you know, in terms of home field positioning and stuff like that, even as early as it is. I mean, sometimes these are the games that can decide that stuff uh, towards the end of the season, you know, when, when, when teams are close record wise. Uh, it can be this kind of game that that can kind of help kind of sway home field advantage and those kinds of things later in the season. So it's an important game, uh, regardless of the fact that it's in week two. Um, Let's switch over the defense then. You know, hopefully we can get Chris back, but if not, hey, we'll carry on. Uh, (laughs) We'll we'll get this thing in and and get the content out to the people. Um, For me on on defense, uh, there's a name that I I think I could lead with, but I'm going to save it because I I know you – or, or Chris, when he, when he gets back, probably want to talk about this young man, too. So I'm going to save him. <laughs> but one that was kind of a, a, a little bit, I think, maybe under the radar one. Um, and people may not necessarily uh, have this as the first name that comes to mind for them on, on defense is, uh, is Tavon Young. I'm going to go with Tavon. And the reason that I, I do that is because if you think back to that Monday night football game, right, where, you know, he had a penalty, um, maybe had a couple other little snaps where uh, he was in coverage and his man was kind of able to get the better of him. And even after that game, Wink talked about, because I think he got a question uh, about it, is, you know, how did he look? And, and, you know, he's obviously missed a lot of football over the last year or so. He said, well, hey, look, you're not going to have him out there playing 60 or 70 snaps right off the bat. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's a lot to put on his plate because that is, you know, the reality is because of his injury. Uh, he has missed a lot of football. But last night, ironically, because of energy, uh, because of excuse me, because of injury, he did have to play uh, a, a pretty significant snap load. Uh, they didn't have Jimmy Smith for that game. They didn't have uh, Chris Westry, who they did have in week one, but he wasn't able to go in that game. And so Tavon did end up having to play – 78% of the snaps, now he played 40. It wasn't a real high, you know, snap count game for the defense like it was against the uh, Raiders in week one. I think the Raiders did 70, 70 snaps, maybe 80 snaps. It was some high number of snaps. Um, yeah. It was a lower overall snap count game for the defense, but still 78% of the snaps. And, you know, he gets the interception there. Um, I think that was in the fourth quarter where, uh, you know, Mahomes is scrambling out of the pocket and no way kind of taking him down. You know, Mahomes is trying to make that throw as he's going down and it's off target. And Tavon picks it off. So I was happy, man. I was happy for Tavon to to show up in that kind of way in this kind of game because I think he's that kind of player. I think we, we, we think back to when he's been healthy uh, and the kind of plays he's made. He is that kind of player, right? And, and want him when he's kind of. 
he just, you know, has had real bad luck uh, with the injury bug. And there were a couple plays in the game where he might have been channeling his his inner Marcus Peters, where he was trying <laughs> to jump out, and it <laughs> might work out. Uh, but, you know, at the end, towards the end of the game, uh, when they needed a turnover, because they were they were in that situation a couple times there at the end, where they, they needed a turnover uh, to get the ball back, he was able to get one. So for me, it was Tavon. Uh, we got Chris back. Uh, we're doing defense now, uh, Chris. I, I started with Tavon. Uh, I was telling Carrie a name that I know either one of you probably want to mention. I didn't lead with because uh, I wanted you guys to be able to have an opportunity. Maybe you both talk about him, but uh, a young man, uh, very near and dear to our hearts. But I will. I will. I, it's up to you. It's up to you to pick who you want to talk about on defense. Not, I'm not trying to steer you. So uh, somebody on defense who uh, who stood out for you. I'm going to go with my man, Penn State, Adafi Owe. Um, I, I feel like he was the best player on the field, well, the best defensive player on the field that night. Uh, it's, it's it's funny how, because I, I was pretty high on him, and my projection was not that he was going to be this good this early. I thought he'd be able to contribute on early downs and also mix in on these exotic packages well, when it comes to third down. But I did not see him being a, the leader in snaps for the, the uh, outside linebacker group at all. And not only is he leading them in snaps, he's backing it up with big-time plays and big-time moments, too. Because in the Raider game, he had a, almost had a big-time play, too, against Derek Carr. And Carr was able to get it off in time. So we're seeing this in only week two. And it's kind of like Lamar, where... We, when Lamar was drafted, we knew he was going to sit behind, uh, behind Flacco, and then when he got thrusted into the starting lineup, he kind of just took over, and he was able to turn turn the the Ravens into a a, a playoff team that year. Obviously, with some help, he didn't do it single handedly, but he was the spark. And then in 2019, he's the damn MVP. So it, always kind of like on that same path in a way where. We didn't. We had high expectations for him, but we just didn't expect it to happen this early. And you know, granted, it's only week two, but I mean, the it looks like the sky's the limit for you know, as long as the season goes on and he stays healthy, it, it's it looks like the sky's the limit for him. Yeah, you I, and I, I. I wanted to give you credit for this on Twitter today that you were really the primary person who said, "Hey, to, to me." And you know, all three of us are are into the draft and, and we love looking at prospects. You were really the primary person who said, "Hey, I know you know this name. You know, we all kind of knew the name, but you were like, you need to really take another look at this guy because there's something there that could be really, really special." He's like, "Yeah, you, you know, you were you were saying, hey, he's getting knocked by people because he didn't have the sacks, uh, you know, in his last year at Penn State or whatever." But like, you just look at from a physical standpoint uh, what this guy brings to the table and the, the potential right because he he is he was then and he still kind of is now still you know a lot of raw material there that can that can be refined it can be improved um and we're seeing you know how he's affecting games early on while still learning and and, and, and kind of refining that raw material as it you know kind of kind of starts to really come together for him uh, from a technique standpoint and just from an experience standpoint um you know because it's different different up at the NFL level, kind of learning a new thing up there, a lot of new things. Um, it's crazy what it could be when we're seeing, you know, the kind of effect he's having now. Uh, you think, man, this guy really is just, you know, a baby in terms of experience in the league. Uh, yeah. It's crazy to imagine what it, what it could and be. And it, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy because how many rookies have we seen that they just – they, they have to get a grasp of the system and they just sit down and, you know, they learn. They have to take their time. And this dude is leading the the um, outside linebacker room in snaps in week two. And it's like, damn, like this is this is nuts. Like this is just it's, it's really blowing my mind because I did not expect this to happen so quickly. Neither did I. I thought he was going to come. They were going to bring him along a little more gradually. Uh, I certainly didn't see. The snap load um, that he's taking on, and, and you know, maybe you say um, it's needed, you know, in in a lot of ways. But that that's one of the rooms 
uh, on the team, on the position groups, where they actually are relatively healthy. Um, you know, an outside linebacker. Uh, mm-hmm. But aside from Dalen Hayes, Dalen, yeah, let me let me let me correct myself. Dalen Hayes, you know, didn't go uh, the last two games. Um, and even so, like they have, uh, what they give Ferguson one snap. Yeah, I think so. So it's like. Damn, <laughs> you know, like they just put in all their trust in this young kid, and and he's rising to the occasion. He's rewarding them. He's rewarding them. That's for sure. We saw it in that game. Those two turnovers that the Ravens had there uh, in in the second half. He was directly involved. Really, the cause directly involved. Not even the right way of saying it. The cause of them, uh, particularly that fumble. I know he literally took the ball away from. Uh, from Clyde Edwards and Lakers. So, and, and he uh, was almost he was almost the reason for another one, the one to, to uh, that Tavon almost caught on the sideline. Yeah, yeah. On the third down, where he where he got to, um, he he had that delayed blitz when he got to uh, Mahomes, and Mahomes tried to fit it in there, and Tavon couldn't just couldn't grab it. But he was almost accountable for that one too. Yeah. So the man, man's in the backfield. You know, he's he's jamming. Uh, <laughs> and rerouting Travis <laughs> Kelsey, he's, just, he's he's all over the place. He's chasing runs down from the backside. The guy's all over the place. It's it's it really is uh, something special to watch, and we're just seeing very early stages of it. Um, and what did Justin so, Houston say? He he said that's who you who you create when you when you uh, create a player on Madden. Yeah, I mean <laughs> we saw it. We saw it. I, I know uh, one of the one of the friends of the show, Coach Evans. Uh, he showed a clip of a rush where, you know, the ball was out. Mahomes actually got the ball out quick. But the rush against Orlando Brown, I mean, it didn't look real. I had to watch the clip a couple of times. So I was like, there's no way that he moved that fast. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Coach Evans said he hit him with the Allen Ivan cross, the Allen Iverson crossover. It, he, <laughs> he absolutely hit him. But it was like he, it was like he teleported because you almost didn't see the crossover move. You saw him go outside and then he was inside. And it's almost like you couldn't see the move that got him inside. It was so fast. Like, oh my goodness, this this is, <laughs> this is really scary up here because everybody is not going to get the ball out like Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, one of if not the best quarterback in the league, and you know he gets the ball out. Um, everybody, everybody's not Patrick Mahomes. Everybody they play is not going to be Patrick Mahomes. They're going to be guys that hold the ball, and uh, that's going to be trouble against this team. Anyway, Gary, defense. Who who did who did you have? Uh, I think I might have passed my bad luck on to Kerry. <laughs> no, I'm here now. So yeah, right. I'm going with OA as well, man. Like you know, you guys know I like to make those uh, basketball analogies, and Coach Evans made it easier for me to do this when he tweeted. It. You know, Orlando Brown getting hit with that wow, that quick crossover. So, you know, when you look at the NBA and how it's a star um, driven league and, you know, you see these teams that do well in the regular season, they share the ball, they don't turn it over, they play good defense, play hard, you know, all those things. But they fall short in the playoffs when things kind of bog down. And, you know, the Knicks from last year come to mind. Um, And it comes to when you need to win at the highest levels. Sometimes all the scheme and all that stuff get thrown out of the window and you just need a a dude that can create a shot. And that's what Owe is. Owe can create his own shot. Like, Wink has created shots for a lot of people over the years in this scheme, you know, facilitating pressure doing some of those things oh they can do that himself and the dude has only played two games and he still has a lot of refinement to do you know a lot of things that need to be um ironed out with his game but it's pretty special man for this guy to be two games into his career and you can already look at him and tell you don't need to help him you don't need to scheme anything for him he can just flat out beat his guy and he can beat him with speed. He can beat him with power, um, you know, however. And so that's that, you know, when, when people are questioning the, the trade for Orlando Brown, you know, um, 
to get that extra first round pick. Well, the extra first round pick is a Dafe Owe. You know, there's not there's nothing else to question at this point. You know, this is the guy that he can be what has eluded the Ravens. That four man pass rush that you you know you know you want to see a little bit more juice from to just be able to get off of the field with a four man rush and be able to play just you know. Uh, you know, basic coverage behind it or whatever you want to do. Here's a guy that that legitimately can allow you to do that. You know, you look at uh, Tampa Bay, how well they, they played this Chiefs offense in the Super Bowl. Well, you look at their their front four, you know, JPP and, you know, those two guys in the middle, you know, and um, Shaq Barrett. Those guys were able to just whip the the chief's line and so it gives you flexibility to do different things on the back end well old way is going to be part of that and you know matt bk he he's growing he could be another piece of that these are the the building blocks the foundation for uh a raven's defense that you hope is going to be able to do that same thing yeah, and I, I got another guy I want to mention, but before I do, you made you made it uh, you touched on a, a good point there about uh, the trade for Orlando Brown and, and that pick becoming Adape Owe. You know what we didn't hear about this week that we heard about uh, we heard a lot about after particularly after Ronnie went out is oh man, what about not not taking a tackle in the draft? What about Ben Mason? You know what about? hear any of that after this game nobody, yeah. nobody was talking about any of that anymore it's 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 amazing how things can change when guys play well on the offensive line you know when you you have guys in your building you have guys in your organization who are um you know multifaceted like patrick mccarty right who can play different positions and you give them an opportunity because it's really you know you need them <laughs> in this game to step in and play a position and they play well, right? Now nobody's talking about that anymore. It's interesting how quickly that goes away. Uh, but anyway, uh, the guy that I, I wanted to mention was Anthony Avery. Anthony Avery, who has had to kind of step in to a starting corner role uh, this year with Marcus Peters going out you know, before the first game, uh, had another solid game. I mean, look, it's not always going to be perfect. You know, they're going to give up some some catches and, and, and things like that because, look, that's that's life uh, as a corner in the modern NFL with, you know, the passing attacks of the way that they are, with the quality of athletes at the wide receiver position. It, you know, it's going to be difficult uh, to, to just shut guys out completely. But another solid game for double A at a really, really clutch play in the fourth quarter there on a third and nine, one-on-one versus the Cheetah. And, uh, and got a PBU, or at least got his hand in the way where Tyreek wasn't able to make the catch. I think he actually got a PBU on the play. But just, you know, really nice play. And for me, I was really happy to see that for him because it was a really confident play. And yeah. that's kind yeah. of been the thing for him with me is that all the ability in the world, you can see, it, you know, in terms of size, speed, uh, everything that you want from kind of an outside corner. But it's just that little bit of I don't want to say lack of confidence. I don't think he's I don't think he's you know not confident in his ability. But it's almost like having to having to see it on the field, having to do it on the field. You know, kind of like look, I can make that play, right? Not just you know, kind of having the, the belief in your head, but having it actually happen on the field to go out and make those plays. And he made the play. So I think against that, can, that guy, against that guy, yeah, that guy. We know that guy. There's nobody who can run with that guy in the league. Um, so to make that play in that spot, in that situation, like I said, we're not talking about just early in the game, some first down. It's third and nine, fourth quarter. You need the ball back, uh, and he makes that play. So I think that was big for him. Um, anybody else on defense? We're back around to you, Chris. Anybody else on defense you want to mention? Or if we don't, if either one of you want want uh, to mention a guy, uh, course you know i got a special teams guy but let me do another round <laughs> yeah, of course <laughs> oh no i just i want to just uh because this is going to be my um my offensive guy before my laptop wanted to go against me um i want to talk about the coordinators because i 
he's still not getting the respect he deserves. It's about to be what three years now, and like you said earlier, Mike, the offense's job is to put up points. And people could say, yeah, if he didn't have Lamar, he wouldn't be this, he wouldn't be that. But guess what? He does have Lamar, and he is putting up the points. So I don't want to hear it. Yeah, you're not gonna like every single series that he has. There are there's no fan base in the NFL that loves their every single series that their offensive coordinator uh, calls because there are Chiefs fans who complain about Andy Reid. And so it, it is you're never going to love what the offensive coordinator does every single time. But in totality of these last three years, this guy has done nothing but put up points and be the engineer, one of the best offensive uh, uh, offenses in the in the National Football League. So I don't want to hear it about Giro anymore. And then Wink, man, Wink, I don't know if they tied him up. I don't know what happened, but I know it must have killed him not to be able to blitz as much as he wanted to. <laughs> but props to him because I, it, it was a great, great thing. And, and even Travis Kelsey said it, where he expected them to man up a little bit more. He expected them to bring more, more pressure. And Wink went against the green. And he was like, nope, not today. Not today. We're not going to do that. And I, I think I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think Mahomes was four for four against uh, against blitzes on Sunday night. So it was like, yeah, it was it was smart not to blitz that guy. And I, I think the the um, the t- touchdown to Byron Pringle, I think that was a blitz where Tavon uh, came off the slot. So it, it, he burned us with with one of those one of those blitzes, too. So uh, major props to the coordinators, man, because they they did a hell of a job. Yeah, the the G Row thing, you know how I feel about him. I've been a G Row apologist from the beginning, uh, and it's just an unfair standard, right? For people, we know how great Lamar is, and, uh, but it's just an unfair standard for people to say, well, if he didn't have Lamar, well, if Andy Reid didn't have Mahomes, if Bruce Arians didn't have Tom Brady, I mean, you could play that game with anybody. So I don't I don't understand why with him it's like, well, no. The offense is only having success because he has them on. Well, do that with anybody. And and Wink, yeah, man, very out of character. <laughs> but <laughs> those, where that was what was necessary. And, you know, I was seeing people tweet about that, how, oh, where where is he? They haven't shown any shots of him on the side of the line. <laughs> the room somewhere. And then, you know, whenever one of those few blitzes did show, I could just, I could envision him, like, breaking out the room. Like break, you know, popping the lock, running out the room, and blitz real quick, and they have to like take it down. <laughs> uh, but no, it was it was a necessary game plan uh, for, for this particular offense and this particular quarterback. And even even with that game plan, uh, it was still very difficult. I mean, they still put up what thirty four points. Uh, so <laughs> it was uh, it, it was it was one of those things where. You, you're just kind of holding on, right, against against that guy and this offense and then needing to make some, some plays there at the end of the game. And the defense did. Mm-hmm. I think the last three offensive possessions for Kansas City, it was turnover, punt, turnover. So uh, the defense showed up in a big way when they needed to. Terry, did you have anybody else on defense? I know he's still there. I can see him. Yeah, I, I'm glad you guys both hit on the coordinators because I think both of them really battled in this game. You know, taking the shots early with Mahomes and, you know, going down on the score. And now Wink has to, you know, step outside of his box, step outside of his comfort zone as far as calling those blitzes. And, you know, he's got to keep those guys encouraged because – you know, when you look at it, they go down and they're like, okay, here we go again. You know, it, it's up to the coaches to kind of, you know, write that ship, calm everybody down and say, hey, we got this. This is what we need to do. But, you know, we we can, we can pull this off. So, you know, hats off to Wink on that side of the ball. Greg Roman, um, I think the criticism of him has been unfair 
um, I do think there are some things that he could have tweaked as far as, um, you know, some of the um, route combinations and different things. But I think you've seen him um, step up to the plate. And and I see, um, you know, especially with those bunch sets and some of the – it's not too much different than last year, but there just seems to be a little bit more cohesion with them. Um, as far as what he's doing with Hollywood, I mean, he's using Hollywood to his strengths masterfully, you know, through two games. Uh, I mean, every, every strength of Hollywood, he's leveraging it, you know, in big-time ways. I uh, like the way he's using Sammy Watkins uh, inside and, you know, getting him matched up on uh, nickel defenders. And, you know, he's just doing a good job. I mean, with, with Giro, I can't really find any faults as far as play calls. I mean, it, it, it just looks like a good, balanced, you know, run-based offense. But, you know, he, he's finding ways to utilize play action and, I like the two bat sets with putting Latavius in there with um, Tyson as a you know nice little wrinkle because you know Latavius can block as well. So um, I'm glad you guys brought up Greg Roman because you know he's a guy that's never going to get any credit. So I think it's important to you know give these guys their flowers, man, when they deserve them. And you know you can definitely tell that both of these guys have been working. Yeah, the thing I always say about Greg Roman in the passing game, obviously the run game kind of speaks for itself and how effective it's been, beyond effective, historic. Uh, I think the key for them is to be able to throw it on their own term. And I think that's when their passing game is really right. at its peak because uh, they can kind of dictate who they want to throw it to, what they want to set up, you know, what part of the field or what player they want to attack on defense. And so when they can throw it on their own terms, I think their passing game can be has been very efficient and that's kind of the key uh, to their whole offense so let me let me get my special teams guy in here before we got to get out of here uh <laughs> and and it's probably not you know it might surprise some people because you may say wait a minute that wasn't a great play look nick moore maybe the best hold we have ever seen uh on special teams because <laughs> if he doesn't hold that guy on that punt that's a block punt right and they're back in in their territory and who knows where the ball goes? Do the Chiefs recover it? Is it a touchdown? You know, we don't know. Uh, but if he doesn't hold that guy, John Harbaugh said it himself in the postgame press. He's like, no, that, that was going to be a block. So big shout out to Nick Moore, man. I mean, hey, sometimes, you know, uh, a play that, that is a negative because, you know, maybe it's called, you know, as, as a foul or a penalty can can be a positive. And, and I think that was one of those situations where if he doesn't hold that guy, uh, maybe we're talking, maybe we are somber uh, today and we're not, we're not as happy as we are because uh, the game probably, you know, goes a little bit differently if they block that punt, recover it, maybe even score in this situation. You know? so shout out to Nick Moore, man. Crucial hold, clutch hold on his part. <laughs> Long snappers are people too. Yes, sir. Long snappers are definitely people. Um, <laughs> Did you guys have anything else you want to touch on, or, or can we uh, can we land this thing? Yeah, I'm I'm good. I think we hit on on everything. Yeah, and this time for real. It's not like last week where we said <laughs> we're gonna go. We had something else. No, this time we're really gonna go. This is really it. Um, so hey, look. Appreciate everybody. Like I said off the top, for always listening, for tapping in with us. Uh, we we've noticed. Uh, more engagement, right, on the channel, uh, on Twitter. Uh, you know, so we appreciate that. I definitely want to shout out everybody who's been who's been tapping in. It hasn't gone unnoticed. Continue to like and subscribe and download and share, tweet, you know, all your different social networks, you know, just spread the word because, uh, you know, we're, we're going to keep doing our thing and keep trying to bring you guys um, good quality content and just a different perspective. And we think you know is out there uh right now you know it's all love you know everybody's out there doing good work but uh like i andre 3000 said back at the source award south got something to say we got something to say so <laughs> <laughs> we're doing, we're doing our thing yes, too uh, but until next time for uh chris carry yours truly uh y'all be good out there and we'll uh we'll get at you peace peace my dad's making it hurt